essentially what transpired prior to the Big Bang. Correct? You have to be careful with the language. So if you define the Big Bang really carefully as the time when the universe was very hot and very dense, and as I said, you can't argue with that because we can see it as we can look out into the sky. Our best theory of how the universe got into that state is that there was a time before that, and it's called inflation. What was there prior to the Big Bang? This question has always been a challenge for scientists, but now it seems they've found the answer to it. But it has left scientists shocked, as Brian Cox revealed that something terrifying existed before the Big Bang. So the idea is the universe was, well, it was there in a sense, cold and empty and it expanded extremely fast. That expansion slowed down and stopped, and the energy that was driving that expansion got dumped into space, heated it up, and made all the particles out of which we're made. That's what we call the Big Bang. What existed prior to the Big Bang, then? Why has it left scientists terrified? Let's find out. That theory has a kind of extension called eternal inflation, which is that inflation essentially goes on forever and just stops in little patches. So, you imagine the fabric of the universe, space-time, stretch, 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 and then it slows down and stops in little patches. Each one of those patches is basically a Big Bang and a universe, of which ours is one. So you end up with this sort of picture of an infinite fractal universe of basically an infinite number of Big Bangs, and that's called the inflationary multiverse. In the vast cosmos, the idea of absolute nothingness seems theoretical rather than real. Even if all energy were removed from the universe, it wouldn't be truly empty. Currently, the universe is full of matter, radiation, antimatter, neutrinos, dark matter, and dark energy. Even without energy, the universe still creates new forms of energy. This phenomenon confuses us. It seems the universe doesn't understand our concept of complete emptiness. If we removed all energy, leaving a void, one might expect the universe to reach absolute zero with no particles. However, this is not the case. Even in an empty universe, its expansion would still produce radiation. This extends far into the future, or even back to the time before the hot Big Bang. The universe, it appears, never truly becomes void. Given all of this, is it plausible that the universe originated from nothing? We can be certain that something always persists, even if particles, antiparticles, photons, and quanta are removed. Empty space remains. If we move away from any mass or energy sources, clear the space of external electric, magnetic, and gravitational fields, and prevent photons or gravitational waves from entering, there is still a physical emptiness. In this space, quantum fields endure, and the fundamental constants and laws of physics endure. There is an inherent, finite, positive, and non-zero value of zero-point energy in that space. This represents the closest approximation to nothing within our universe. During your imagination, you might envision an even more nothing-like state, but it lacks physical reality. No experiment can replicate such a condition. By adhering to scientific principles, we acknowledge that something always exists, because true nothingness cannot coexist in our universe. However, science has not provided an answer to the question, of why. Presently, our universe appears far from empty. It's teeming with stars, gas, dust, galaxies, quasars, cosmic rays, and radiation from both starlight and the remnants of the Big Bang. With improved observational tools, we could potentially detect additional signals that we anticipate are present. This encompasses gravitational waves generated by any mass moving through a changing gravitational field, mysterious signals from the constituents of dark matter, and a broader perspective on black holes, both active and dormant, aside from those emitting the most radiation. Everything we observe occurs in a universe that isn't static, but is continuously changing. From a physical standpoint, it's fascinating to see how our universe is changing on a grand scale. The space-time that makes up our universe is expanding. 
This implies that if you position two points far apart in your space-time, the proper distance between those two points, the time it takes for light to traverse between them, and the wavelength of the light traveling from one point to the other all increase over time. The universe isn't just getting bigger, it's also getting colder. As it expands, light stretches to longer wavelengths. It moves toward lower energies and cooler temperatures. The universe was hotter in the past and will become even colder in the future. During this process, objects with mass or energy in the universe attract each other, forming clusters and creating a vast cosmic network. If you were to somehow remove everything, matter, radiation, every bit of energy, what would remain? Essentially, you'd have empty space itself, still expanding, still governed by the laws of physics, and still influenced by quantum fields that fill the universe. This is the closest physical approximation to true nothingness, yet it still adheres to specific physical principles. To a physicist, in this reality, removing anything else would create an unrealistic state that no longer reflects the cosmos we inhabit. This suggests that dark energy, as we currently understand it, would still be present in this hypothetical universe devoid of matter. In a nutshell, we would arrive at our destination if every quantum field in the universe were set to its lowest energy state, at the zero-point energy of space, where no additional energy could be extracted for mechanical work. In a universe containing dark energy, a cosmological constant, or the zero-point energy of quantum fields, it's plausible that the zero-point energy wouldn't be truly zero. In the not-too-distant future, there will come a time when radiation will outnumber all other forms of matter and replace dark energy as the primary factor in the universe's expansion and cooling. However, there's also a period in the universe's history, not in the future, but in the distant past, when something else besides matter and radiation held dominance. During cosmic inflation, prior to the hot Big Bang, our universe underwent extremely rapid and constant expansion. Instead of being dominated by matter and radiation, the cosmos was controlled by the field energy of inflation, akin to today's dark energy, but much more potent and expanding at a significantly faster pace. If eternal inflation is accurate, but time remains finite, where might the universe have originated? There must have been a beginning, correct? To address this question thoroughly, let's unravel three commonly conflated concepts and discuss each individually. The Hot Big Bang in Relation to Our Universe 2 The theory of cosmic or cosmological inflation and its role in preceding and preparing for the Big Bang 3. The issue of an ultimate beginning or origin for our universe and why both inflation and the original concept of the Big Bang might not offer a satisfactory solution to this question in the early 20th century, a significant synthesis took place when four key pieces of information came together. A breakthrough by Alexander Friedman in Einstein's General Relativity showing that a universe filled uniformly with any form of matter and energy cannot remain static, but must either expand or contract. The rate of this expansion or contraction depends on the overall energy density of space. Henrietta Leavitt's observational work established a connection between the period of brightness and dimness of variable stars and their inherent brightness, known as the period-luminosity relation. Observations by Vesto Slipher, measuring the shift in light, either red-shifted or blue-shifted, from our solar system's perspective in spiral and elliptical nebulae, later identified as galaxies, indicated that these galaxies were moving away from us at incredibly high speeds. Milton Humason and Edwin Hubble discovered the same kinds of variable stars that Henrietta Leavitt had identified in spiral and elliptical nebulae. They were able to measure how far these galaxies were from us, confirming that they were beyond our own galaxy. These findings, combined with other data, led to the concept of the expanding universe. If the universe expands, it suggests that over time, space itself stretches, causing the matter within it to become less dense, as space. 
expands, radiation, like light waves, not only becomes less concentrated but also stretches, leading to the universe cooling. If we rewind the clock, the opposite would occur to matter and radiation. In earlier times, when the universe was younger, it was denser and hotter. If we rewind further, all matter and radiation would have been squeezed into a smaller space, increasing the universe's density. The light, which stretched due to cosmic expansion when reversed in time, would have had a shorter wavelength, resulting in hotter temperatures. If you envision going back as far as physics permits, you'd reach a singular state where all matter and radiation existed within a single point of infinite density and temperature. Five fundamental expectations about the hot and dense conditions of the early universe were formed as a result of the initial concept of the Big Bang Theory. These forecasts became the foundation of the Big Bang Theory. Extragalactic objects' distinct redshift distance relationships should indicate that the universe is expanding. Initially, the universe should have been relatively uniform, with structures like stars, galaxies, and clusters of galaxies gradually forming and evolving over time. In the past, the universe was hotter, preventing the formation of stable neutral atoms. This prediction led to the discovery of the cosmic microwave background, which is observable today. In the initial stages of the universe, when it was extremely hot, atomic nuclei couldn't form stably. This led to the creation of light elements, such as hydrogen, helium, lithium, and their isotopes. The universe was so hot that neutrinos played a significant role. Recently, this prediction was confirmed indicating that cosmic neutrinos should have detectable effects on both the large-scale structure and the leftover radiation from the Big Bang. With strong observational evidence supporting these predictions, the Big Bang theory has remained uncontested as the primary explanation for the early universe since the mid-1960s, coinciding with the discovery of the cosmic microwave background. As evidence supporting the hot Big Bang theory grew in the 1960s and 1970s, certain challenges surfaced that the Big Bang alone couldn't resolve. Several observations contradicted the concept of the universe originating from a singular state of incredibly high temperatures and densities. Three of these challenges stand out. The horizon problem. When we observe different directions, the universe seems to possess uniform temperatures and density throughout. However, since the onset of the hot Big Bang, these regions have never had the opportunity to communicate, exchange information, or achieve thermal equilibrium with one another. This raises the question, how did they evolve to exhibit uniform temperature and conditions across the board? 2. The flatness problem. In a universe that's expanding, there's a continual tug of war between the initial expansion pushing things apart and gravitational forces attempting to pull everything back together. Remarkably, in our universe, these opposing forces appear to be perfectly balanced, resulting in a spatially flat universe. The question arises, why did our universe come into existence with these particular characteristics? 3. The monopole, or ancient relic problem. If the universe underwent extreme temperatures and energy conditions in its early stages, why do we not observe any exotic remnants, such as right-handed neutrinos and magnetic monopoles? Theoretically, these particles should be detectable and still present today. Rather than just taking these conditions as given, which contradicts the scientific method, Scientists are looking for a mechanism that would establish and arrange these initial conditions. 1980, Alan Guth introduced a solution to these cosmological mysteries with a groundbreaking paper. He suggested that an early phase of rapid and continuous expansion, where the universe's energy wasn't spread, he suggested that an early phase of rapid and continuous expansion, where the universe's energy wasn't spread out evenly, but was dominated by a field with a nearly constant energy density, could solve these problems. This concept became known as cosmic inflation. During inflation, space itself expanded exponentially, faster than the speed of light, smoothing out 
Any irregularities in driving the observable universe into the flat, uniform state we see today, tiny quantum fluctuations were stretched across vast distances, becoming the seeds for all future structure, galaxies, stars, and eventually planets. This inflationary epoch, lasting for just a fraction of a second, not only addressed the horizon, flatness, and monopole problems, but also redefined our understanding of the beginning. Instead of a singularity from which space and time emerged, inflation posits a pre-existing space filled with vacuum energy that underwent rapid expansion. But the theory doesn't stop there. Eternal inflation, an extension of this model, suggests that this inflationary phase never entirely ends. While it may stop in isolated regions, creating pocket universes like ours, it continues elsewhere. This leads to a multiverse, an infinite, ever-growing ensemble of bubble universes, each potentially with different physical constants, dimensions, and even laws of physics. Our universe, then, is just one bubble in this cosmic foam. However, this view poses new philosophical and scientific challenges. If inflation never ends globally, and new universes keep forming, then what sparked the very first one? Can time exist without a beginning, or must there be an origin beyond even inflation? Some physicists propose that quantum gravity or string theory may hold the key. Others suggest that the universe could be cyclic, contracting and expanding eternally, or that time itself is an emergent property, meaningless outside our own cosmic bubble. The truth is, the question, what happened? before the Big Bang, may ultimately be unanswerable in a traditional sense. Yet, what's remarkable is how far our observations have taken us. From distant quasars to faint echoes of ancient photons, from gravitational waves to quantum fluctuations, we are slowly peeling back the layers of cosmic history. Each discovery brings us closer to understanding the ultimate nature of reality and our place within it. And though the answer to what existed before the Big Bang may elude us, the pursuit of that answer continues to inspire bold new ideas, technologies, and dreams.